Hello and welcome to a brand new Five Heart Podcast Live. For you here on YouTube, on X, on Facebook, I'm your host, Greg Mahachko, co-host to my immediate left, uh, Minnie Hunt, all the way from uh, sunny Arizona. And can you believe it? He's here. He's back. He's returned. Triumphant, victorious, and so damn excited to be here. We were not sure we'd see him. We thought we might have to punt, kick the can to next week, so to speak, but that man knows his way around a, a dryer. That's all I'm at liberty to say. Hoss freaking Reuter. What's up, man? How's it going? It's good to be back. Ah, look at already the, the uh, adulation. Beetle B says Hoss. Justin says, wow, it's Hoss. Are we gonna get a like a JR WWE? By God, it's Hoss, you know. Oh shit, it's Hoss. His biceps look like they've ingested a few prime toes. <laughs> well, you know, I think uh, I got the same amount of biceps as Dion has toes. Oh. <laughs> Those jokes. Are Yay! Different. Hoss is in the house. What's up, Roger? How's it going? Hoss in the house. In this is just what it's going to be. <laughs> just the first five minutes. Just, everybody yeah, saying hi to just... Keep it rolling. <laughs> oh man, uh, great to see, man. Thanks for you, when you reached out to me and we're like, "When's the next show?" I'm like, "It's tonight." Like, oh, that's not going to work. I got to go to the gym. Yeah, the gym. Then I had to go be a <laughs> Maytag repair man and repair a dryer. Which it not was... only did you go to the gym, but but you made me feel real bad about myself in the process. <laughs> What I was I was trying to not you know be mean to you. Okay, no, I have a question. Yeah, yeah. Oh gosh, yes. As you know, representative of the chat, I've okay. only seen Hoss in a recorded situation. Has he ever been on live? Have you ever been on live, Hoss? Uh, did we do live last football season, Greg? Yeah, for five heart. Yeah, for not for o- overreaction. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. So I've I've done uh, some live stuff, but uh, mostly just the overreaction. That was I like love your I ago. love I love the overreaction. That's my I I never miss it. It's so good. Are to you watch you guys. That we actually did a good job. Yes. <laughs> it's Sometimes so I felt good. Like we get too deep in our emotions on the show, you know. Especially. I mean, it's- it's emotional. Yeah. I get it. Which is why, after spring football, we're bringing it back. Not to wallow in our misery, but to see if we can disassociate uh, yes. and and remove the emotion. Uh, and and so that's that's the plan for late spring. Moving into summer, we're gonna week by week. Haas and I are gonna revisit uh, <clears throat> that five and seven campaign, and and uh, yeah, it's gonna be a good, a good time. We'll be had by all probably. You know, I'm curious to revisit it and actually look at it a little bit more objectively. You know, like yes, we we're gonna know the result of what happened in each game, but like kind of remove the bias of emotion that you know a lot of us. I don't think many of us watch games. <laughs> you know, silently and just, you know, li- be okay with the outcome of every play. You know, we're just yelling and screaming. So basically I want to see if when I rewatch like the Minnesota game, if I feel the same way as I did last August 31st. Well, I mean, you're looking at it from now, our perspective now. So you already know what happens. So that kind of removes that emotion but also the positive, like there's so much positive. So I think it'll help. You know, I think already, like I went back and watched a little bit of the Michigan State game and I missed some of it, Um, you know, missed some of the fine details from being at the game in East Lansing. And when I look back on it, I was like, you know, we really didn't play that badly in that game. Now, when I was in East Lansing, I was walking out of that stadium, which is an absolute dump, by the way. I just, I mean, I was telling everybody that would listen, like, worst quarterback in Division One football, you know, like, we, you know, like, it was bad. I went new, so, to quote George W. Bush with the mispronunciation of the word. Uh, 
we have Dylan watch essentially on the show Hoss, which is uh, how long does it take before uh, we have a, a Dylan Ryola reference in regards to Minnie's mild obsession. Um, and, so, I mean, we're all obsessed. That's why. Not every day you sign a five-star quarterback, Greg. It's Thank you, Haas. But it is every finally. But it is every week we have to hear about it. Uh, <laughs> so, so Fred says that uh, Minnie was too busy reading Dylan Beat and missed the the light the show that you were on. Um, so, and oh, Aaron's there, right there. Was there a live show when my uh, text messages kept getting blown up, and since I have a MacBook. Um, <laughs> I couldn't turn off the sound. I think that was like right after the end of the regular season. But let's talk about your text messages, Mm -hmm. shall we, Haas? What? (laughs) What Oh, oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, Haas says, uh, he's like, I don't think I'm going to make it tonight. I got to do my, uh, fix my dryer after I get home from the gym. I'm like, "Ah, Jim, what a waste of time. And I'm just going (laughs) to put the screenshot up of our conversation. And this is, this is, this is where, you know, I know I'm, I'm, I'm a husky fella, right? (laughs) Um, so we've got uh, Haas says uh, waste the time. Tell that to my five or four eighty five pound squat and three forty bench. I said, well, you can squat and bench <laughs> me. I hope you're happy. He's like, you're not that fat. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's just a unit of comparison of weight. Yeah, I just you know got me right here. Got me in my five heart. Haas, it got me in my five heart. Much love, Greg. Nothing but love there. <laughs> scroll down okay. some professional wrestling now, uh, gifts. Okay, no, since you guys are talking, since you're talking about this, I have to know. You're that's squatting a lot of weight. Mm-hmm. Are you one of those guys that makes a lot of noise at the gym? I try not to, but <laughs> there's some sound effects that are only you know they come with the territory. Uh, They're an occupational hazard. <laughs> I'm on I'm on like a Fred. elliptical and looking at these guys going, what the heck is going on over there? They're but like having a be, child. I try to be pretty quiet. Um, I'm a very antisocial lifter too, like because I have a job <laughs> where I do so much talking and have to deal with so many different people throughout the day. When I get to the gym, all I want to do is have 90 minutes where I don't talk to another living soul on the planet. So headphones in um if i do make loud noises when i'm lifting it's because i can't hear myself over my uh noise canceling headphones so hopefully (laughs) i don't maybe i'll have to solicit some feedback from the people who are always there at the same time as me i i've been asking somebody to spot me for like the past year on bench (laughs) and i still don't even know their name um i kind of feel like ron swan where he's like worked with somebody for seven years never knew his name best friend i ever had Jesus, Aaron Rostovsky totally... says, when Greg gets to 400 pounds, this becomes the five chin podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that one got me. Um, so bright and early before the show started, uh, Fred was here and says, after this week, I feel like that Affleck uh, smoking in the alley meme. Can't wait for the fun about to ensue at the Chatterfields. A welcome respite uh, needed. So that's what we're here for, Fred. We hope that you already got your money's worth. Uh, and Roger wants to know the beer tonight. Last week, if you recall, I had not been feeling good and was not drinking beer. Are you feeling better? I'm feeling much better. The house is the house is much better. Uh, and so good. tonight, uh, we welcome our unofficial sponsor. No, Hoss is not Bluetooth <laughs> like it used to be back in the day. Uh, hey, that was like five I'm, years ago, man. That's 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 a good time. Um, not that I've ever you know. <laughs> so we're back. We're back on the wagon. We got oh, the yingling. Hell yeah. Um, oh, there we go. So it's gonna be a good show. Um looking forward to visiting with you all. Y- you know, after the show, Hoss, you know the good old days after the recording, like we'd have another half hour of, of conversation after we stopped uh um you know hit, hit stop on, on rolling sound. And similarly, you know, when, when me and I in, in the show, um, you know, we have a quick little recap of everything. And um, I forgot where I was going with this. Beer, we talk. Yingling. Beer. No, it's not. I don't know. Anyway. We talk after the show. Yeah. But it, it's, you know, yeah, I can't remember where I was going though. So never mind. Okay. I failed. <laughs> no, we, um, we had many, we had many philosophical uh, discussions after the show, Greg. 
that's where we became friends, man. Yep. So now we talk on the phone yeah. as well. It's a good time. Oh, um, no, we just, I know what it was. We got back there. I said, uh, and I've said this before, this part, like doing the show, it's not just fun. It's easy. You know, like I have a stress job. Yeah. I think most of us do. Um, but when we hit live or record, I don't have to, not to say I don't have to think like that makes it sound like I put less effort in there with people already think I do. Um, <laughs> but we know, you, know you it, do. It's just, I, I get to sit here and I get to be with my friends. Uh, so talk to us. Sports. <laughs> the, the, the new joke is uh, I, I Google during the show. Uh, so Aaron says, not even Google can help me now. And uh, Fred says, Google it, Greg, what are my thoughts? <laughs> so no, the, the thought is that I, you know, find so much joy in this. So I know I, I, I imagine that's why you all keep coming back. And uh, um, so thank you. Yeah. Usually I, I save the thank you. I keep coming there. back for the 20 bucks a month that box sends me. You sure you're still getting paid. <laughs> no, I'm just... I was going to say, I'm not getting paid. <laughs> <laughs> I used to like pile up like five or six of those checks until it hit like 120 bucks and then just cash them all at once. <laughs> I, think, I think you have like 180 days to anyway, moving on. No, there were some that, like, December of 2020, I cashed them in June of 2021. All right. Well. Nice. Let us. Okay. Can, can we get on with the show? Let's, oh, let's talk did some you, reports. Did you get a copy of my notes, by chance? He, he did not. I did not. Oh. This is this is preparation that I am not accustomed to, Greg. See? See, see Greg. friends. Greg. See friends. Uh, in all fairness, I sent him the link. He, he only told me he was going to be on the show 15 minutes before we started. Hey, I like <laughs> the app, man. <laughs> well, um, yeah, yeah, I'm and, sure and you I've watch. Been, I've been demoted to panelist, just so you know, Hoss. Yeah, man, you're like, show. The, you're like the Tim Russert of Husker Sports Podcast, man. <laughs> you're not just a panelist, you know. That's why I call you. No, the he, no he is just the panelist. <laughs> I see Minnie, the newest addition to the show, demoted me. <laughs> I've spoken, Greg. Okay. Thank, I appreciate that vote of confidence, Austin. Awesome. So, yeah, so now we have notes. I'm just an uh, interloper. As, as Justin says, we're fancy now uh, with the notes. Come along. And way. we're going to start with, we're, we're going to get all the bad stuff out, out of the way first. And that is, we're going to talk Nebraska basketball. And due to the fact that they lost first, we have to talk about the men's team first. Uh, last Friday night, or early evening anyway, Nebraska, Texas A&M uh, from, I can't even remember where the hell they were playing. Oh, Memphis. Memphis. It, it got, it, it came around. Uh, it just was Google not, that. no, I didn't have to Google it. it shut up. <laughs> Gosh, he's already on it. He's quick. It's fine. <laughs> it was um, one of the worst performances from Nebraska when they needed admittedly one of their best performances. And at the same time, you had Texas A&M team that probably shot, uh, not probably, they shot better in that game against Nebraska than they did all season long. <laughs> the end result was a 98-83 uh, loss for Nebraska. End of their season, they continue to be winless in uh, the NCAA men's basketball tournament. And to cap it all off, like that was bad enough. But then you say you see Casey Tomanaga on the sideline at the end of the game just crying like you could tell that it meant a lot to him to get nebraska there he i think he i think every every team wants to be the team that gets it but you know um in some of his post-conference uh words he said i'm, I'm never going to be able to play with these guys i'm never going to be able to play for coach hoiberg anymore and so it, it really all you know i i think hit him uh and and no nobody played great in that game, uh, defensively, we looked horrendous, and we we couldn't rebound because Texas A&M was hitting all their damn shots. <laughs> like, you know, so um, but did you both have the opportunity to watch the game? Unfortunately, yes. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Haas. I was just going to say that was the most Nebraska sports thing ever to draw a team that has shot like shit all season long, and they just shoot out of their minds. I mean. I know during football season, yeah. I've always said we're the Chicago Cubs of college football, but we're just the Chicago Cubs of college sports. Anything that can go wrong will go wrong. And then 
you turn around on Sunday night, turn on Houston and Texas A&M, and even though A&M gave Houston a scare late, um, Wade Taylor starts game 0 for 7 from 3. And I also saw in the some of the advanced analytics where if you adjusted a and m shooting to even just, you know, slightly above their season average, it's an 83-82 Nebraska win. So I'm sick of statistical anomalies when it comes to Huskers. <laughs> You know, the thing that struck me as interesting was we were on such a high right at the beginning until about halfway through their first half. Tominaga shot three threes right away. Bam, right bam, away. bam. Yeah, we were just so hot. And then all of a sudden we just went flat. Took uh, the family out for fish, uh, good old fish fry uh and got home to actually uh, turn the audio on on the way home for me and the twins and nebraska was up by seven it was about five minutes in the game should have just turned it off at, at that point be like yes we're winning let's maintain the trend uh got home watched the game and it, it just got so much worse those patented nebraska ball scoring droughts i mean they should get a nil sponsorship from dekalb seed you know, drought resistant. From what? Drought Decal resistant seed. seed? <laughs> yeah, you need to become drought resistant. You know, Nebraska <laughs> all drought resistant. So okay, yeah. There's they a great should. opportunity there, but you know, when they Alec <laughs> missing probably about four or five bunnies right at the rim really kind of changed the complexion of the mm -hmm. game when it was still very much yeah. in doubt. And you know, when A and M scoring like they are, and then they're getting all those second chance points on the offensive glass with. I think it was 44% of their missed shots result in offensive rebounds. So, I mean, it's about a coin flip each time that they're getting, you know, second chance points. So against a team that, you know, I think it's safe to say that we overachieved a lot this year and we didn't really have any spectacular talent on the team. It was just, you know, the sum total was greater than the parts. Right. Um, it's just, you know, I really thought that this was kind of going to be the year that, you know, we finally get off the schneid with, being the only power five school to never win a tournament game. Well, and you know, yeah. the thing that what we've been it, talking about for the longest time, Minnie, I didn't mean to uh, cut you off is, is the ahead. depth that, you know, the, the strength of the bench and they're, they were non-existent. I mean, the, it, it just felt like scoring was so anemic. The fact that they got to 83 points was a, a bit of a, in my opinion, miracle in and of yeah. itself. Yeah. Um, I mean, just, uh, you you had Juwan Gary, who you expect more from with nine points. Rank Mast had seven points. Josiah Alec had 14. I mean, there was, there was what that statistic that's, oh, anytime Alec scores more than six points, like Nebraska was seven and one or seven and two or something at that point. Uh, Bryce Williams had 24. Tominaga had 21. Um, but Wilcher had two. I mean, that's yeah. the guy who led you I know. Uh, in the win over Wisconsin. Um, it. <sighs> If you would have told me before the game that Alec would have 14 points, I would I would have thought that we would win and it would be somewhat running away. You know, yeah. And yeah. I uh, I go that, back that, to with this team. Oh, sorry, Minnie. No, that's a lot for him. I mean, he's not known for throwing up points. He's known for his rebounds. So yeah, I'm the rebounder. Kind mm -hmm. of uh what did uh one of the sports writers called him blue he's a blue collar basketball player you know that's he, great. he's somebody you want on your team because he does all the work he plays like nobody else i mean i feel bad for him i feel bad for both you know kc tomanaga and josiah alec being the last starting seniors for mm -hmm. them to have to go out like that i just feel like oh it just ended up so flat what a sad end especially um, Oops, sorry, Greg. I was going to say, James Boardman here with the comment about oh, C.J. Wiltshire had one good game this year, not going to miss seeing him dribble off his foot. Um, and, and that's that's the thing, too, is that um, – I'll address you in a minute, Aaron. Um, they – you know, that win – Hoss, you mentioned no, no like, standout, <laughs> super obvious, uh, like, superstars on the team. Obviously, that you know, we had – the, the Japanese Steph Curry, which, you know, grain of salt, that only works when, you know, you're, you're hitting the shots. Um, but 
there's not like a first round draft pick, you know, or anything like that. There might not be a draft pick, um, but well, the sum of all the parts. And and there were there were just consummate team wins when they won. You know, they had that tremendous run at home. They only lost one game at home. It, it happened to that other team in the state that I can't remember their name. Um, but I mean, they defended the home court against the number one team in the, in the country, Vince Purdue. They defended the home court against uh, the top team in the conference at the time, which was Wisconsin. Just they, I think as, as they continue to, again, excel, maybe beyond expectations, we started to raise the bar of expectations. Um, and so we all thought, oh, you know, and eight, nine is a trap. You never know what you're going to get in an eight, nine matchup in the tournament. But I think we all went into Friday afternoon, yeah. Friday evening, expecting more. I think that's, yeah, the, we did. I think that's the safe way to put it. You know, expect we had a team that really overachieved. They didn't have anything to prove. We did. So we kind of had that momentum going in. We haven't won an NCAA tournament. We're now zero for eight. And none of the games have been really all that close. I was looking at the scores, you know, somebody posted on Twitter going back to our first NCAA appearance, I think, in 1986. And most of them are, you know, multiple possessions, you know, not just within two or three points, but, you know, eight, mm -hmm. nine points, you know. Forgot, kind of tried to forget about the Baylor buzzsaw that we ran into a decade ago last time we were in the dance. But uh, I wanted to bring up a point Fred made about Mast. You know, he said that they doubled and beat up on Mast. They were way too fast and killed us on the offensive boards. And, you know, he had that great game against Purdue and the way that Fred Hoiberg, I almost just said Fred, and then I didn't want to give Fred, sorry, man, I didn't want to give you too much credit here. <laughs> uh, how he kept mass kind of at the top of the key and distributed to, you know, guys cutting to the basket. Uh, that was really the key to get drawing Edie out from under the rim. And then as the year went on, I think the effects of that knee scope kind of caught up to mast and the dude played his ass off, but you know, Nebraska needs a big rim protector. Yeah. Uh, in the paint and mm -hmm. you know it's a miracle that nebraska got to you know 23 wins without a uh, rim protector in the paint and without a true point guard i mean if they had a big physical point guard or even sam greasel from last year who played a lot of point forward and you could kind of have a physical presence at that position bringing the ball up the floor against teams that like to really pressure the ball um at, starting at half court I think that could have made a big difference for Nebraska. And it's kind of, you know, a shame that guys like Sam Greasel or Trey McGowan's, um, you know, they didn't get a chance to be on this team that actually accomplished something. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're, I think any of us who have watched a lot of Husker basketball can think of so many guys that you're like, God, they deserve to play on great teams. Lance Jeter's my all-time favorite Husker basketball <laughs> player from about 2011. It's like that guy deserved to play in an NCAA tournament. Hmm. Fred Sacco, by the way, says <clears throat> he'll take all the credit, Hoss, like the pimp says My to his God. hose, keep it coming. <laughs> Fred, I missed you, man. And uh, Tiger Shark Diver says our downfall is no true point guard. So, again, uh, in alignment uh, hey. there with what you yeah. just analyzed. So, um, it's going to be well, they, basketball. I don't know if you could tell, Greg. <laughs> they finally figured it out. Bryce Williams was supposed to be the point guard, like, towards the end of the season, right? He, he was doing the lion's share of the duties. Yeah, and then so, you know, that Illinois game in the Big Ten tournament. I mean, I'm not, not I don't want to get into officiating, but I was watching that game. I was at a bar in Omaha for St. Patrick's Day. So I, you know, didn't have the couldn't hear the sound, I couldn't hear the announcers. But as I was watching that game, just the amount of hand checks on Tomanaga when he's away from the ball. And just mm -hmm. the Big Ten officiating is just a complete joke. Across every sport. Across, yeah, across every sport. It's just a complete <laughs> joke. I mean, you know it's bad in football when you hear the referee's name before the first call of the game, and you're like, oh, we got, you know, Ron Snodgrass, you know, we got John O'Neill, you know, you know him by name. You're like, that's never good. 
Um, sure. Well, want to highlight this one here uh, regarding the loss. Fred uh, Sacco says, I take responsibility for the men's b-ball loss. Haven't watched them in two decades. Oof, what a loss. Uh, Texas A&M's three-point percentage was inverse of their uh, dick punches in that football game. Yeah, we all remember that football game. We talked about that football game, I think, just last week. <laughs> or, no, I, I, I guess it was when uh, uh, um, Trev announced his departure. So, yeah. uh, Speaking of... TSD says that Trev already has a southern accent and oil dripping out, out of his shoes. <laughs> oh, is he going full Brian Kelly? Oh, Me and my family. He's uh, wearing his, his 10 gallon hat. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, so, with the end of, I mean, we mentioned that, you know, CJ Wilcher and the follow up uh, comment about how he's not going to be with the program. He is one of four players transferring many, and you're going to give us the rundown as. Melissa informs us that four guys are in the portal so far. CJ Wilcher, um, Ramil, Ramel, Lloyd Jr., Eli Rice, and Blaze Kika. I don't know how to say his name. That's why um, I Eli, you in. <laughs> Eli Rice was with us for just this last season. And then Blaze Kata was two seasons. So I think, you know, the one that is going to be missed is CJ Wilcher sad that he's having you know feeling the need to move on but he is so he's in the transfer portal so hopefully we'll pick up a guy who can replace him or like uh, uh james boardman said maybe won't bounce the basketball off of his foot so um i mean we he really helped us a lot this this season so oh here you go um Fred wants to know, many if you've applied to work officiating crews for these hoopsters transferring. No. No! I mean, come on. I'm a football girl. You guys know this. It's true. <laughs> she has... Hoss, I don't know if you know, when Dylan Riola was going to play football in Arizona in high well, school... Well, he did. No, or, he did. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, let me... He did, uh, and he transferred. Minnie, you, t- you tell the story. You tell the story. Okay. It's not my job. He So he was playing in Chandler. I, I live in Phoenix. So he transferred from Chandler his sophomore year? You no, junior year. Excuse me. Junior year to play at Pinnacle High School, which is a mile down the street from where I live. So, of course, I got all excited because – you know, the potential of him coming to Nebraska was still there, I felt. And so I called the school. I asked them how I could be involved with the football program. And they're always looking for volunteers. But it just turned out that I had met a guy that same week who was mo- moving the chains for high school high school games. And he said, oh, you're going to have so much fun. Volunteer to do that. So I volunteered to move the chains at games, football games for Pinnacle High School. Then Dylan transferred to Georgia, as we all know, never got to actually play at Pinnacle, even though he was practicing in the spring with them and also to the summer. So that's the story. Simple. Did you continue working on the chain thing? (laughs) She never are you kidding? No, I never actually worked on the chain gang because he transferred. <laughs> I mean, come on. Would you? I, I, the number one, work, so I'd probably say no. <laughs> the number one quarterback recruit. I've seen him at games. I've been at, at the airport when he's flying out. Like, I know his ties to Nebraska. And I, I'm just like, He's going to go. He's. I knew it. I just felt it in my gut. So, yeah, I just wanted to be around it. So Aaron says Dylan played high school football down the road, something, something, something. Everyone else is obsessed with Dylan too, right? <laughs> and Fred says, I mean, come on, there's not a Hawaiian quarterback who many got, has gotten placed within a 500-yard radius. <laughs> Roger Moore wants to know if there's evidence for Dateline. And Fred says Chris Hansen hasn't caught you yet, Minnie. Guys, come on. I think this show is is sufficient evidence. (laughs) 
it, it's gotten to the point where uh, Minnie's married. We have met her husband. He has been on and, and said hello, <laughs> and we call him Dylan. He doesn't mind. He doesn't mind. <laughs> he's fun like that. He doesn't. He's, care. he's great. He's a, he's a superb. Actually, individual. he's a Dylan fan too. That's why. But not you know to the Chatterfields and Greg. You know, Minnie might get the last laugh. You know, if Dylan Raiola leads us to a. 11 and 1 regular season wins the Heisman as a full I'm telling if, you. If that happens, I'll also jump on the bandwagon. I too will volunteer for chain gangs. I will send you a jersey for <laughs> Christmas, Greg. <laughs> I appreciate that. I also oh. still owe you a hat. It's still sitting in a box. I wasn't gonna say anything. I know I know, trust me, I've not forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, let's uh let's we're gonna Let's take care of a little bit of uh, housekeeping. The housekeeping is, um, hold on, I'm going to make an adjustment so that I'm the one who gets covered up, uh, because the housekeeping is the YouTube. If you're watching this on YouTube, and there's a chance that you are, Hoss, would you believe, I don't know if you can see the stats, there are over 300 people watching us live right now. Damn. We used Damn. to just record this like you and me at 10 o'clock on a Wednesday night. Back in the day, we didn't even have Zoom or whatever StreamYard mm-hmm. that we're using. Skype. It was Skype. We were I mean, Skype it was, it was for audio cool. purposes only. I remember the time that wow. we were like, should we do video? And we both turned on the video. I was like, yeah, never, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> see that. Uh, but hey, if you are uh, watching us on YouTube, make sure you hit that uh, subscribe button, uh, like, and hit the ring the bell for notifications so you know every time we drop new episode. It's not just the Five Heart Podcast, but there's Monday Night Therapy, there's Husker Heat, there's whatever other random uh, interviews that John does live. There's John's uh, reaction videos, sometimes uh, from his toilet. Uh, there's John's uh, college football history videos that are also, uh, there. it has its own channel, but we, we also cross-share those, however you want to phrase that. So uh, make sure that you stay up uh, today on everything Coronation on YouTube by hitting the like and subscribe and notification bell. So that is one part of the uh, housekeeping. The other part is Aaron says, is no one going to talk about Greg's pink shirt? <laughs> uh, I, we, I could we, not we, help but laugh. Like other red. We have this. We have this conversation every week, uh, and and at this point, people know. Like Highlander Gun says, it's pink. Scott Schrader, thank you. Scott says it's not pink. It's just the lighting, which is true. Um, That's real, man. The people stepping up for you like that. It's also. It's definitely not salmon. Uh, tiger shark I diver. It. So, um, it's, you guys, it's, uh, thank you, thank you for all of that. Step off, Greg. All right. We're just glad you're here, Greg. Thanks. I That's all we care about. It. Is that just because without me, there you wouldn't know there how to would run be the show? No show. Exactly. <laughs> That's true. Oh no, yeah, no. I'm I'm the critical role. <laughs> yep. But That's you fine. are the panelist. Let don't, me don't let that go to your head, okay? <laughs> Moving on. Uh, <laughs> Vince Watson says, at least the women beat the fighting Trev. So let's uh, shift gears and talk about uh, the the team that gave us a win yes. in the tournament last weekend. And that was uh, it, uh, Coach Amy Williams and her uh, Husker women's basketball team. And many yes. thanks to the notes that you have compiled. We know that they won by two points, 61-59. And not going to lie, when I saw that, I said, ah, they're going to lose to Oregon State. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? I when 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 I saw that they only beat Texas Saina by two points, I said, ah, they're not gonna win the next game. <laughs> well, uh no. And they didn't. But hey, at one point in the next game, we were trailing it just five points. Um, so we won the first round 61 to 59 against Texas AM and Logan Nisley, the freshman, she scored 16 points. And I said at the time, too bad she wasn't playing with the men. <laughs> that girl was on fire. Uh, Alexis who else scored Markowski, 16 points? Alexis Markowski also did. Um, I mean, it was Amy's birthday, so... I think they had extra incentive to kind of 
positive incentive to win. You know, I, I don't feel like this AD situation that took place the same week that we went to the tournament actually helped the men or the women. I think if anything, the negative publicity, the negative emotions kind of like weighed in. It always Just will creep the distraction, in. the distraction of it all, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, and so, you know, it's good to have something positive to think about. It's your head coach's birthday. So I think that's, that kind of helped push the girls. If only every day. It, it it's a shame that last Friday wasn't Hoiberg's birthday because that would have made the difference. Truly, truly, it would have. But in the second round against Oregon State, um, yeah, as you alluded to it, they lost sixty-one to fifty-one. Damn. Uh, right. Nebraska. Yeah, Nebraska Go ahead, couldn't make any of their shots. Go ahead, Haas. I was just going to say, damn you, Mike Riley. <laughs> Oregon State, you know. Oh. Low-hanging fruit, I know. That's a callback. Or Tristan I Jimmy. love that. Tristan J- Avery Roberts, Trent Bray. I mean. You know, no. you know what I do now, Hawks? All you have to do is stick with Mike Riley. That, that's enough said. <laughs> Greg, how many yinglings do you have? The, they don't even sell that in Illinois. I got a guy in Missouri who <laughs> hooks me up. This sounds like you're a bootlegger now. So no, no, it's fine. <laughs> he he totally brings it across state lines, but uh, you know, completely legal. I we definitely didn't make the transaction about that. Hmm. I think there's an entire movie made about that in the late seventies. <laughs> I was thinking about that very song uh, earlier today. Eastbound and down. Um, we definitely it's didn't make the transaction there. in a Culver's parking lot. By the way, that's the most midwestern thing I've ever. <laughs> <laughs> I am I am going to bring back a lot of uh, Yingling because I'm going to the Horseshoe on October 26th for Nebraska Ohio State. So ah. yeah, that's my road game this year. Hopefully, we'll be seven and zero heading into it. That'd be nice. Good. And I've only seen one win in all the road games I've gone to. So uh, let's really hope that this one, you know, it'd be to quote Kevin Malone from the office. It would be nice just to win one. It would be nice. Yeah. To win one. I've got uh well some Greg, some, so some import, export, export business. <laughs> so Greg, like if you're the bootlegger, can we call mm-hmm. your sons? Uh are they gonna be writing books called Bootleggers Boy? Uh like Barry Switzer. No. You're not gonna get into you're not gonna get into the business wholesale. Well, this is this is uh <laughs> th- this is a note that, that my boy, my oldest, wrote me. Uh uh-huh. And he included a, uh, what I believe to be an orange Tootsie Pop with it. And I just want to say, he says, Dear Dad, I love you. So the sucker's for you to show how awesome you are. I know mm-hmm. I always say no, but that has kind of changed. Because <laughs> like when I tell him to do something, he says no. I'm like, so. we I bragged uh, quite a bit about my boy last week. Austin, you'd have been proud. Nice. Family That's family. a nice note. It was a nice note. I was very, I was very un, unsuspecting to receive that because he's not usually that nice to me. <laughs> oh, it's a hard that's, job. I'm going to save that one for later, David Madney. That's a good one to hold on to. <clears throat> um, yep, I, I agree 100 percent with you, David. Well, we'll get there. Don't can't Scott, jump ahead. You're going to the call well, of CM. Stop. Jealous, All man. right. Okay. We're okay. going to get to football, so stop. We have to Guys. close the book on women's basketball. Man, I'm going to keep us back on track. Greg, I think you're missing the point that we're trying to get to football and you're the one that's talking about <laughs> women. Yeah, Greg. Okay, guys. So here's the deal. With Oregon State, the women could not make a shot to save their lives. We only shot 31.3%. Whereas Oregon State, they shot 40.7. And that is the entire difference right there. Again, 61 to 51. You're talking about like literally eight and a half percentage points of making your shots. Okay. Yeah. I know, right? So lots to work on next season, but lots to look forward to. Is Alexis Markowski, is she a senior? 
Yes. And I, Jazz Shelley will be gone as well. Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. Markowski, does she have that COVID year, though? Because I didn't see where she was. I didn't see where she was. Well, I didn't see where she was departing. I knew Jazz Shelley was, but I didn't see where Markowski's career was buttoned up. That's that's the only reason I asked. Google it, Greg. That's not my job. (laughs) Donald Trump would call you Google and Greg. (laughs) We're just gonna sit here and watch you. (laughs) Google it. (laughs) No, I want to share something else. Uh, because this was look, uh, yeah, see. Melissa. I, I didn't have to look. Thank you, Melissa. Okay. Uh, Melissa knows. Actually, Melissa knows everything. She is like a plethora of information. This girl doesn't miss a beat. Nice. I, that's a, you know what? There will always you, be a vital place for people like that on our podcast. You know, in the <laughs> keep watch it straight. It. Yep. Watch it, Minnie. You may be talking about your replacement. Because Greg, you know, <laughs> Greg forgets a lot of things. That's the Google. That's fair. That's fair. Melissa, um, you do you want to handle this? <laughs> I'm surprised anybody wants to. Uh, I've been doing this show for a decade. I'm, I'm surprised anybody's still here. Um, I, I have to share this while we're talking about uh, um, Fred was kind enough to say eastbound and down, yingling and talking. Greg going to do things John said can't be done. Uh, our, one of our that, regulars. Wait, no, no, no. No, wait, Greg. I have been wanting a tagline for our show. Can you click on that again? I think I think we just found it. Tagline Eastbound and down, yingling and talking. Greg gonna do things I can't be done. Well, at this point, good. John's gotta show up and tell me that I can't do things. <laughs> I don't I don't I don't take uh I don't take directions oh. from phantom invisible non-existent authority figures. I have enough of those in my life. But okay. I wanted to share that because we got talking about, uh, you know, bootlegging and such. And one of the regulars, one, one of our, uh, uh, our our good old boys, so to speak, who couldn't be here tonight because he feels like crap, uh, Josh. Josh Hansen's not here with us, but he sent me this today. And he said, I was one of maybe four people who would appreciate it and understand it. I like our chances when I put this up here. What is it? <laughs> I don't get it. Have you ever seen Star Wars, Minnie? Yeah. I yeah. have, but I, I was young. You, you, <laughs> you don't watch it like every couple of years? I know. If I need to take a nap, I will. Wait, Greg, are you watching right. Star Wars that frequently? <laughs> you know he is. I'm I'm watching a Star Wars at least twice a year. Not as often as Lord of the Rings. Hey, Lord I love Rings. Lord of the Rings, so you will get no <laughs> dissing from me on that. <laughs> okay. Not not Star Wars, not Lord of the Rings, but The Godfather. Okay. I'm I'm on board with Godfather. I love part one, part two, and three. You know, you have just you just have to stick in there and watch them. It's it's the They're same stance so that good. I have with Rambo. They should have just stopped after First Blood. First Blood's a phenomenal movie, <laughs> perfect story. And then Aaron, yeah. Aaron Rostovsky, our uh, baseball beat writer at Coordination.com, says I watch some version of Star Wars multiple times a week. And here's the fact: it's not just <laughs> the, the nine movies, but there's three seasons of Mandalorian. There's Ahsoka. There's uh, uh, just there's plenty of Star Wars content out there. How in the world did this is I? This is all Josh's fault. When he comes back and watches this, we're gonna mark it at 42 minutes. It's all your fault, Josh. Um, so, I mean, like I, I rewatch The Sopranos at least twice a year. That's fine. I I rewatch Band of Brothers every two years. Actually, that's a that's an watch for me. And the Pacific. I would I would I would watch rewatch that. I would never rewatch. Uh, what's the last one that we saw with Emilio Estevan? Estevez. <laughs> Excuse me. They talk about is it Young Guns? Or... Yes, I would never rewatch that. Well, Ever. you're going to. <laughs> Don't forget, we still have the watch watch along. In the, the only reason the why I showed up is so I could wear my outfit. I had a, a full on gunslinger like belt 
with a, I didn't have a gun, but you know, it had the places for the bullets. Did John show up wearing chaps? No, we couldn't talk him into it. <laughs> uh, Fred says, by the way, Hoss, yes, The Sopranos, best show ever. I knew you were cool. <laughs> I like what uh, Highlander Gunn said. I think of ancient Rome multiple times a day. Me too, man. Uh, me too. I did when too, but for different reasons. Out to me last fall when that was a meme going around, somebody asked me how many times I think of it. And I was like, I just think that's oh, yeah, crazy. I go get water from the drinking fountain, refill my water bottle. And I think, hey, they had aqueducts in ancient Rome. That's pretty cool. You do not, you liar. Go to pay my taxes. That is so it's like, weird. It's, you know, the, thanks to the Romans, render unto Caesar, I have to pay taxes now. Nobody thinks that. Render unto Caesar what is Caesar's render unto God what is God's. Uh, there you go. Josh Hansen just jumped on to say hello and sad I'm missing Hoss, LOL. Hi, Josh. You need to talk to your friend about his Star Wars fandom. <laughs> it's it's not out of control. All right. <laughs> Are you a Dune fan too? I, I watched the first movie. I don't say I'm a fan. Like I, I, let's move on. God dang it! This is a Husker podcast. We're now gonna we do movies on movie Gumbel night here. Damn. Hmm. Now we got Greg or Bryant Gumble. Let's move on. <laughs> let's move on. I like I like what Roger said. Oh crap! Where did Roger say it? Nine forty nine. Right. I think of the ninety four Huskers three times a day. Did you guys see the day by day movies? I have. Did not. you watch them? I have not. Yet. Oh, that costs money. So good. They're so good. Love them. Worship them. Scott Frost is in them, giving like a commentary. This is before mm-hmm. he got fired. You know what? I was wondering that, but I think it's after. Did he have a did he have an alcoholic beverage with him when he was providing? <laughs> Just trying to think of ways that we can figure out when it might have been done. He did not. He looked completely healthy. So maybe it was like 2018, 2019. So the president. No, 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 no. no I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. You know, he is this exact same age as Matt Roll. So let me ask you a question: Which one has aged better? I don't know. Scott Frost looked like, you know, like George W. Bush when he first took office. And then when he left office, the same phenomenon happened there. Yeah. Might be a little too soon to judge that one, Matt Rule. <laughs> I think there's something about being the head coach at Nebraska that just ages you. It does. I mean, does. Mike Riley, he aged, he was already old. And he I aged know. A lot more. It's true. Uh, we do it to see. him. I was looking at a, a picture of, um, Trev Alberts kind of popped up as he was an AD and he was only the AD for what, two years? Mm-hmm. And uh, he looked so young compared to when he left. It does age you. Fred says <clears throat> uh, it was before he got fired. He had a few spots at the second one. It was okay, but it's annoying because he's a fraud. Reach it, Fred. Fred, Fred. You gotta stop holding grudges. You Roger gotta Moore stop. Says, uh, <laughs> rules liver has aged better. Uh, I'm gonna save that one. David Manny's got some great questions here. We're we're gonna get to them all. <clears throat> uh, Fred Sacco said Mike Riley's older than the diabetes of Whack Dion's toes. Oh, so Being a trader does age a person. You're right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> trader and Trev. What? I mean, what just think of open up here? Oh. just think of uh, Judas Iscariot. He he aged. So so quickly after betraying Jesus that he died. <laughs> Getting ecumenical, Greg. Tis well, the season. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, season. yeah. I was just gonna say that was he was he was trying to work that in somehow. Uh, you know, and and I didn't do it earlier, but uh, it's also Passover, so hi him. <laughs> I don't know if you, I'm pronouncing you and your right. yingling, sir. Yiddish and Yingling, it's, it's you know, it's how I how I roll. Um, <clears throat> all right. <laughs> Fred says, on. "Mini already- never. It, it's been 
it's been here since forever and I'm allowed to hold grudges or I've been here since forever and I'm allowed to hold grudges. <laughs> so yeah, well, I think, I think Fred play. goes back to when I first like went on a tirade about how much I hated Mark Whipple's offense at Nebraska. Oh my gosh, me too. It was the worst, like it was the equivalent of being served like a ham and cheese sandwich. <laughs> Like not like gourmet no. ham, like from honey baked ham, and not like good cheese. It was like, like one no, no. one slice of jelly and spam ham. and it's spam. Horrible. Like his offense would have been innovative in 1999. You know, it it was so painful. To so watch. horrible. This is one thing we highly agree on. Highly. I do not like Mark Whipple. He, I think he should have been fired in early September that year too, but. We had nobody to call plays. We would have fired him. <laughs> yes. We have a new athletic director, and the athletic director had his introductory press conference earlier this week after, let's see, going from Washington to Lincoln, I think, to Memphis, back to Washington to Corvallis. The guy put on, racked up some frequent flyer miles in, in the last week. So, Minnie, you watched the presser. You have some very uh, enlightening uh, oh. comments about Troy Dannon. Let's let's hear them. Well, you guys are going to get it from my perspective. Just buckle up. Be ready. First thing I want to say about Troy Dannon is that he has the cutest family ever. His wife, Christine, and they have four kids, but two of them were with them. Holly. And William, adorable. Holly is just there, like, hugging on her dad. They hand them, like, Husker wear to put on, and William throws it on immediately, and everyone's like, oh, you know, they're all dressed in red as it is. But they're just so into the job, and I love that. Cutest family ever. A um, couple of quotes from Troy Dannon that I would love to share is that he said about Matt Rule, which he's a big fan too, that Matt is the greatest coach at the right time. At the right place, he will win big here. I thought that was pretty cool for him to say about the head coach. And regarding the stadium renovation, he also said, if it helps us win here, great. Does it help us win academically, socially, or on the field? That's the criteria for, for spending every dollar here. And then lastly, one of the things I love is that he basically said, what is what I say. The AD's job is to do no harm. He said, page one, paragraph one, on how to be an AD is do no harm. Because that is the one thing an AD can do. <clears throat> Just get out of the way and let progress take place. So he said he'll also be wearing 1890 collective wear as often as he can, as much as Husker wear. So we need money is his, I think, what he's trying to say. Go ahead, Greg. Pause I'm just gonna add. Hand. <laughs> the senator from Illinois has the floor. <laughs> I just thought that it was the Hippocratic Oath for doctors to do no harm. I didn't know it was the same for athletic directors. Anthropologists. <laughs> and what? Anthropologists, too. Uh. Um, I, I echo a lot of what Minnie said. You know, those things stood out to me when I watched his press conference as well. Um, I, you know, it's always hard to tell, to judge an AD when they're hired. You know, it's kind of a case of where it takes a few years to kind of have enough data to make an evaluation. But I like the fact that he's humble enough to say the do no harm. You know, like that's his number one priority in the job. I like the insightful answers. You know, I think that he's somebody that's not going to try to be a political grandstander, kind of like Trev, you know, was into kind of getting his name out there for some things. I think he's going to be a more effective leader than Bill Moose. Um, he seems much more engaging than Sean Eichhorst. So, you know, I think, you know, 
I think that we have an AD that's well suited for where college football and college sports in general are heading. And I think that one of the things that really stood out to me as well was, you know, it's just a very pragmatic approach where, hey, Nebraska led the country in so many areas and we're on the cutting edge for so long. That's the Nebraska way, you know, not, you know, holding on to, you know, dogma and pearl clutching over traditions, but actually, you know, really taking an approach where it's like, how can we be innovative and lead the way? And sometimes that's not just, you know, sometimes people get caught up with being innovative for innovation's sake, but, you know, having a real, you know, approach and a plan of how to get your athletic programs competitive, I think that he's going to be a good one. Well, I also thought that he was, he he had the mindset of being like a cheerleader, just anything about progress and going forward. Like, that's what you want from an AD. Their management, that's their job to lead. Yep. So, yeah, do that and do it well. And one of the things, too, like I'm reading Fred's comment right now, if you want to pull it up from 958 about, you know, mentioning Bill Callahan. Not until uh, I can say that Steve Peterson didn't get the memo back in 2003 about do no harm. Okay. <laughs> but, you know, Fred said, other than Bill Callahan, who have we seen in the last 20 years who came here that didn't say what we wanted to hear and we clapped like trained seals? And that's kind of the point that, I was thinking where it's, you know, you can't really judge the AD right in the moment. It takes a couple of years, you know, like I think by 2019, we saw that Bill Moose was basically just a, you know, puppet, like he wasn't really getting anything done and, you know, he was creating more issues, but Fred brings up a great point. You know, we we win press conference national championships, just like we win (laughs) off season national championships around here. So hell yeah. You know, I like the f- fact that it's an understated hire. It's not the slam dunk celebrity athletic director. You know, like Jamie Pollard's name always gets thrown around every time we've had an opening. And, you know, it seems like it's somebody that's actually made big initiatives work, like moving Tulane into an on campus stadium when mm-hmm. he was there as their athletic director from playing in the Superdome. Um, the fact that he's on the competition committee and the rules committee for college football says that, you know, he has a voice in the sport of what actually matters, you know? So it'll be interesting to see it play out. Hopefully we're not doing this two years from now. Right. And I know many, that was, I think something you touched on last week about how Matt rule and his first comments, um, after Troy Dannon was, uh, hired, it's like, we get, somebody who's you know involved in in on these committees and and part of these uh, uh selection groups cuz maybe that's how you don't necessarily get a Nebraska Texas A&M you know tournament matchup so um yeah Troy Dannon's involvement in the greater uh realm of of college athletics could you know should be vital to to Nebraska's success moving forward it's true and I, I, you know, I get hung up on things because I do. Because you're um, obsessed with Dylan Raiola. No, but I don't have a problem with Bill Moose. What the heck, Hoss? Bill Moose did some damage <laughs> to that athletic department. Yeah, but he hired a, um, a couple of pretty good coaches. I, you know, I, I agree that uh, he got Hoiberg, but, you know, Scott Frost, I think we took a serious step down from Mike Riley. We should never have hired him. He wasn't ready. I want Gary right. Patterson from TCU at the time, but um, that one, he, he faded pretty fast. His star was starting to fade by that point. Yeah, but also, did you guys realize that Bill Moose is the one who actually started this stadium renovation initiative? It wasn't even Trev Albert. Like the for the south end zone and what everything that Trev announced last August. Yeah, I did not yeah. realize that. It was Bill Moose. So I don't know. Everybody wants to talk about what Trev Alberts did, but really it was Bill Moose. Well, now I can show this comment from much earlier in the show. Living in Omaha, David Matney says, "Who would have thought in 2017 we'd be stepping down?" From Mike Riley to Scott Frost, I don't think anybody had that on their 
2017 bingo card. Because, again, Scott Frost was coming off of the uh, success, yeah. the undefeated season at Central Florida. So, um, and, and Haas, I remember we talked at the time, and I'm not saying this to bring up what are, you know, now with the benefit of hindsight, bad memories, but like yeah, we were talking on this show about – I'll see you in four years at the national championship, buddy, because that's where Nebraska is going to be. You know, the I always think of that, especially because uh, that was the episode when I just bought a hat and you were like, send a picture so we can put it on the uh, cover, you know, or whatever yep. you want to call it for the post. Um, and I will say this, um, up until he beat USF and then Memphis in the conference championship game, I was pretty much against hiring him. Once he beat Memphis, it was like, okay, like that's pretty impressive. You know, that offense is pretty impressive. Then when he pulled it off against um, Auburn, that was, you know, that was a really good Auburn team that put a shit ton of guys in the NFL. And, and so, he was doing that, you know, that could have been a lame duck period because he's already at Nebraska and he's recruiting for Nebraska, but he's still coaching them through the bowl game. And at that point, I thought, wow, like this guy, you know, it looks like he's really able to be a good leader. It looks like he's, you know, what good football coaches are made of. But then, you know, I know like David Matney brought up about the rain game, you know, that Akron game being canceled. Uh, I think that factors into it. But also we were bad at the end of 2017, you know, when we gave up 54 (laughs) or 50 points, three straight games to Minnesota, Penn State and Iowa. But we were not so bad in 2017 that you would think that that team would start 0-6 the following year. Yep. And so looking back on it, there were a lot of points with 0-6 that it was like probably should have known, you know. The only, because a lot of those things never got fixed, never got better. The only thing that I thought that should never have happened, I mean, first of all, Scott Frost was only at UFC for, two years. what was it, two years, yep. okay? I mean, honestly, to say that he did all of that within two years, I think is a big stretch. And he then inherited also, a pretty talented roster. Yes. And then to move all of his assistant coaches with him that had not proven themselves. I, I think that when you take on a job like, you know, the head coach at Nebraska, you have to hire like big time names. And he didn't do that. He brought everyone with him. I think one of Frost's biggest mistakes was not hiring somebody to be a defensive coordinator who had been a former head coach, like especially somebody who understood the Big Ten. Because I think bringing in a defensive coordinator who, one, understood, like had coached against Big Ten offenses, understood the conference, what you get, you know, in terms of, you know, whether it's weather in November, because you're always going to have about two to three weather games, whether it's the, you know, different personnel you're going to see in the conference. And then just having somebody on staff who's been a head coach that he can lean on, you know, and can kind of mentor him through different situational type stuff. Instead, he brings brings Eric Chenander, who, you know, know, he just, I think that guy liked having fun as much as Scott did. Recruiters also. You know, he missed it so bad on so many good recruits. So I just, yeah. Zay Flowers, Baltimore Ravens is one of them. That one hurts. While we're dwelling in the past, uh, uh, David Matney says, remember the hype around Adrian Martinez? Looking back, the complete lack of development in the second year was a giant red flag. Huge. Because that first Colorado game in 2018 – he looked like the second coming of Robert Griffin the third. I mean, the the arm, the speed. I mean, it was. I I was in the stadium that day, and it was just everybody being like, "What? The, you know, we we've, we've got ourselves a quarterback." And then, you know, I think by the time that we got done playing South Alabama in the 2019 season opener, it was pretty evident that he had not only not progressed any further or developed any further, he had actually regressed from what he was as a freshman. Let's see here. Um, Minnie, let's move forward to Matt Rule's press conference. Okay. (laughs) First of all, excuse me, Fred. Fred, your last comment. Mm -mm -mm -mm. 
<laughs> he says, remember the hype of Dylan Rayola. And Damn. then... Dot, 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 dot. <sighs> By the way, uh, it's just DR now. He, he has to earn... <laughs> From now on, he has to earn have, hearing his name on this show. But you don't want to really? sign him to an NIL deal? What's that? You don't want to sign him to a Five Heart Podcast NIL deal? Oh, I can't af- I like- can't afford to sign him to a, a, a Five Heart Podcast We'll have to NIL talk to deal. John. He'll have to talk to SB Nation. You know, they'll have to search in the couch cushions. <laughs> we can get him. Take out a second mortgage <laughs> on my house. <laughs> So I have to put my kids back in public school. I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So Matt Rule had held a presser today. And I'm titling it. The threes. Because it's the third spring practice. So the guys were able to practice with light pads. The last two, all they got to wear with those, you know, those clunky helmets. Um, they're playing on three fields uh, with three different teams. The names are, they're, they're like older names, the Bug Eaters, which was, you know, the original mascot for the Huskers, Rattlesnake Boys, which I don't know where that came from, and then Old Gold Knights. Should replace uh, Rattlesnake Boys with the Man Killing Mastodons. And by the way, if you want your own Man Killing Mastodon shirt or any other sweet coordination swag, you got to go to copycorn.com. Get that copy, put it on your back, be ready for fall. Copycorn.com. Free shirt. Same here. <laughs> you owe me a hat, he owes me a shirt. I don't bring it up because I don't want to make y'all feel bad. Wow, you're the nicest bootlegger I've ever met. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> bootlegger, bootlegger with five heart. Thank you. <laughs> I love the mention of the frost warning shirts. Um, I had back in the day a West Coast offense shirt that looked like the West Coast Choppers logo. Yeah, so you mentioned that. Uh, Aaron says he's going to send me a frost warning shirt to replace my not pink, just the lighting shirt. Again, <laughs> it's not pink. It's It's vintage. Thank you. Herbie doesn't look good in pink. Um, what happened to your day by day shirt? I still have it upstairs. It's upstairs. I didn't. I'm, oh. I'm going to get shit no matter what. Like my yeah. my very nice, vibrant red Nebraska hoodie that the Brett Baker brought to me, hand delivered in person in Champaign in 2015. They call that off cut. They call that burnt orange one time. So I it's just the, light, it's the lighting. Light. It's only because. My red against your red, kind of maybe stick to black. Yeah, do what I do. Black, mostly black Husker gear. Fine, I'll do my best. <laughs> I don't know why my attire is the topic of any conversation? But living in Omaha, David Matney says I have the shame of owning a frost warning T-shirt, and also wonders uh, how many of those frost warning shirts are not being worn by people in third world countries. <laughs> I know, me too. I donated mine too. It's okay. Probably a lot of Buffalo Bills Super Bowl champion shirts too. A lot of them. I remember those news reports of, uh, you know, the team A. You know, this team won the Super Bowl, and this country got all the other ones. There, there's, you know, there's countries contact tribe somewhere in the Amazon that's like, damn. I think that the Bills had a real dynasty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they they don't know about Tom Brady and uh, the New England Patriots. No. <laughs> they should. All right, guys, let's get that back on with the threes. Can we? Yep. Three, the threes. Quarterbacks, three quarterbacks on scholarship. And Rule said he needs three quarterbacks that can start, and he's not going to worry about who gets the start right now. So, what it actually ended up being is all three teams that he has is has a quarterback. And then the defense, they have they go against the defense and they rotate. Kind of fun. I like that, you know, like 36, each unit does 36 plays of situational third down football. You know, so yeah. they're probably working, you know, different passing concepts. 
different run game concepts, screens, and then the defense is able to work different sub packages and coverages. So I think it's a great way to get a lot of reps and it's fun. You know, that element of competition that rule mentioned, you know, if you told them that, Hey guys, we're going to do third down for 36 reps. They're like, Oh fuck, you know, but like, Hey, it's a competition. Guys are jacked. You know, they want to keep going. Um, so, you know, I think that's an opportunity to really um, develop and kind of, get some mental reps for when you do face, you know, a third down in season. Can I, can I share, uh, since we're talking about no, a little bit of on-field practice action, can I share a video? No, no. please, yeah, please. It's your podcast. Yes. Why are you asking permission? It's, because he needs, he needs to ask. <laughs> Watch it. I'm, I'm going to start calling you mama mini if you ain't careful. Um, okay. All right. So this comes to us from Instagram from uh, hail varsity. I want to make sure that I, I give them proper credit. Uh, but this is for our, our number one DR fan uh, in the house. So, um, we, and I, I've killed the sound so we can't hear it. But it's, you know, we'll describe the action. I think we can describe. First of all, I hate the vertical. And I know it's it's designed for cell phones, but I hate the vertical uh, portrait style. And when uh, we get into okay. the actual video, when we start getting so there's some, Thomas. <clears throat> Wait, there's Thomas Fedoni. He's lining up. Dylan Riola takes the snap, drops yep. back. Fedoni runs out and makes a, a, a nice cut across the middle. Nice, nice. post route. Um, that's what I used to do. Yeah. Back in the day, I used Easy. to do that for, for a living is describe radio in audio format for people or describe football in audio format for people. It's a good time. I think Heinrich Harburg's mechanics <laughs> and some of the clips looked better too. I'll tell you, he, he's QB1 for me. No doubt about it. I think you're going to see him step into a game at some point this year and win it for Nebraska, especially I think he'll carve out a role as kind of a short yardage uh, red zone quarterback. Mm-hmm. Basically, you know, he's, um... limit the hits to whoever's the starter. I mean, like I'm saying like it's, oh, who knows? No, it'll be Dylan Riola. He, uh, he has taken some lessons with uh... – that what's his name? Jeff Christensen. Yep. The private quarterbacks coach. Yeah. Yeah. So, and it shows. Didn't uh, uh T magic have a private quarterbacks coach or am I thinking? Yeah. Somebody? Um, God, what was his name? Top. I remember it was top gun quarterback Academy. I want to say it's like oh. Steve Calhoun was his name. You're asking me to reach way back. Into Steve the- Calhoun. That's it. Yeah, you know, that year that he worked with them, he did throw 70% for or 68% for completion percentage. Or I think it was no, I think the goal was 68 to 70. And I think he threw like 63. 2012. Yeah, but, but you know, okay, so think of it like this. Better. This year, we actually have a quarterback coach. A real quarterback coach that actually has proven results. Yeah, so this is He's not a, he was not a quarterback's coach at all. No, he wasn't. And we found that out after the season <laughs> ended. But, you know, he, it was all just because somebody, whoever they had in mind, couldn't come to Nebraska. I don't know if it was Glenn Thomas or not. But, um, you know, now Satterfield was able to move over to tight ends, which is where he always should have been. Yeah, That's I think right. so. And, I think that was the initial plan when Rule was hired. I think it was Jake Peets was who he wanted from the L.A. Rams. And it was last second Sean McVay decided to stay in Los Angeles and not retire. So we lost out on a quarterback's coach. So it kind of it's kind of one of those things where it's like, God, we were close to actually having a better quarterback last year and maybe get hit in a bowl game. But Sean McVay screws us over, which I'm sure you hate the Rams, Greg, because – they left your general <laughs> metropolitan area. I'll tell you why I hate the Rams. First of all, uh, I went to the home opener for the St. Louis Battle Hawks back in 2020, like two weeks before COVID. And the chance on the concourse of Cronky sucks uh, made, made me very proud. By the way, uh, St. Louis, the Battle Hawks are going to be back. XFL action resuming here in just a few weeks. And St. Louis is going to be host to the XFL, UFL uh championship game 
I think it's going to take place in, in June or July. So uh, yeah. by far the number one market in, in this secondary, you know, second tier professional football league. Uh, everybody else can suck it. That includes you, Seattle Dragons, and you, uh, Washington. Um, anyway, I hate the the Rams and Cronky because when they left, that meant that I could no longer see my Steelers every eight years you know, within very short driving distance. You can travel, you know. I I got kids, man. It's yeah. When you have kids, it's really hard. Chicago. I was supposed to be in Arizona last week. Remember that, but I couldn't yes. go because I got kids. Yep. Kids. I know what that's all about. I got wait, kids. Um, just wait, Hoss. Uh, you, you know what? That that is a that is a good point. My uh my my lifestyle will probably be severely crimped at that point. It's 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 so different. You can't even imagine it i spend my days driving from school to school i have three daughters in three different schools Ooh, that's too many elementary junior high and high school and then after that they have activities sometimes i don't even get home till 9 30 at night the, the, you wouldn't even believe it children is the reason why we do the show at nine o'clock because I got to make sure they're all shuffled <laughs> off to bed. <laughs> yeah. I recall from before I quit doing the podcast all the times about, yeah, hold on. I got, got to put the oldest in bed. That was, that was when my wife worked nights and it was just he and I, and I'm like, oh. hang tight. I'll be right back. You, you remember, I mean, yeah, uh, we got to go old school for these recordings and, and we'd yeah. be recording. And that was when the desk was over there. This is way too much information for nobody cares about. But you know, I was wondering like, if you changed your setup at some point. I'd be like, boy, you know, put him to bed. And then all will hear is, you know, clomping around, stomping around. So, all right, moving on. Um, Minnie, well, do we have anything else as far as? We do. You, we do. Okay, okay. Just spring football. That's all. Okay. We've already. Okay. So there's 15 practices up until the spring game, which is. April 27th, we've had the first two in helmets and today in light pads and the media is able to come in and take a look and video. So really exciting stuff. What? Just what? read that comment. Read that comment. Okay, from Fred. For Red. I spend my life driving <laughs> school to school. Many stopping. Guys, and he's casting on. a wide net across he's three not, pools, trying to catch a glimpse of DR. That's dedication. That's from he's not. He's not in Arizona. We know that. We saw him in Lincoln. I'm not Maybe in Lincoln. That mean you're going to register for classes at the University of Nebraska now. <laughs> she wants to. She wants Don't. to. Don't. She wants Ray, to. She wants to be able to claim to be a, a student. It's she, true. I she, never. I. She wants I, to pedigree. One, I haven't lived in Nebraska. I've only visited the most awesome place in the world. And I didn't go to school there. So why am I a fan? Just crazy. Because of Dylan Ryan. Like all you guys. No, I was a fan before him. Before I even knew who he was. Good well, I've told the story about it, how I'm a fan. And, I was and, born uh, here. I've never lived anywhere else. That's perfectly fine. James Boardman says, I'm getting some Kathy Bates misery vibes. Uh, Minnie, please don't do the hobbling method. If you do meet him, we need him. We need his ankles to be very healthy to run through Big Ten defenses. Please. Come on. Never. He's <laughs> such a nice kid. Never. Have you, David Matty says he's not in Arizona because of the restraining order. <laughs> Oh, good times. Um, all right. Lots of, lots of, I've starred some comments from all the way back at the beginning of the show. So we're going to knock these out as rapid fire as we can. Cause we're already a minute 20 into this, or I'm sorry, an hour 20 into this. Damn. We're talking about all the, the bad luck and unfortunate situation we have in Nebraska sports. Nine nineteen. Fred says we get a kicker. Who's never hit a 30 yarder and drains three 45 yarders. Uh, get quarterback who's never started. looks like Elway. That's Husker sports. Let's talk about the opposition. We were talking about Texas A&M three-point shooting and how it doomed us. 
Uh, so yeah, it seems like unless the name is Joe Bowserman, anytime somebody steps up, it's in a, a very successful role uh, against Nebraska. So uh, we'd like to see that that model change. Uh, let's see. Uh, we, let's touch on this real quick well, because Scott, oh, oh. real quick, yep, go sorry. back to Fred's comment. I can't. I I, I take that as a positive. That's okay. I take what he said as positive, not sarcastic like what he meant it probably positive <laughs> Haas can you guess where David uh, Matney lives I, I got you know I probably Douglas County I'm gonna say Elk City <laughs> if you need uh by the way if you're in, in search of a new home Mr. Matney can help you out <laughs> Omaha guy he, he's uh He's a realtor to the stars, or at least the uh, the upper echelon. People who know know David Matney is the guy to call. I mean, look, at this point, David, shouldn't you be paying us? We say some awfully nice things about you. Yeah, David. I think he has. Don't <laughs> he, worry. I think he's he has, actually. Chats. But here's the thing. Those super chats go right to John. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just saying, John hadn't been here in a few weeks, and, and this true. Yingling's gonna run out pretty, pretty quick. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna need need some Yingling. Hey guys, cash. here's the deal. Oh shit, more, we more, guess, need payment in Yinglings. That's what we need. Right. We'll take that. To keep Greg going. That's what we need. <laughs> the show. Trust me, everybody who was here last week knows the show's better when I'm drinking. <laughs> so, just wait for the. Okay, Greg. That's right. Should be a sponsor. I'm, I'm just glad happen. you're feeling better. That's Me all too. I care about. Ah, last week, your health. Um, David, man, let's talk because we can get some some special imaging up here. We can put a little frame around a tagline. Five Heart <laughs> Podcast with the tagline of uh, "Greg uh, does whatever John says can't be done." Uh, brought to you by Living in Omaha, David Matney. <laughs> Fred says, you want to sell this house? Don't make David Matney choke a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. True. So, all right. uh, back to this upcoming season. Scott Schrader said uh, a road trip game this year is going to be the USC game at the Coliseum. Haas, I think you said you were going to – or not – not you. I think you said you said you are going to Ohio State. Yep, Ohio State. So I think uh, the Coliseum in Southern California will be a little bit nicer than the Rust Belt uh, butthole of America. No, it's Ohio. <laughs> Ohio is a butthole. True. It is the butthole. Florida's the armpit. Ohio's the butthole. Uh-uh. Uh, Florida's gorgeous. You know where's the worst place I've ever been? Gary, Iowa Indiana. Indiana and East okay. Gary. <laughs> <laughs> I always forget about that Gary, Indiana story. Gary. <laughs> um, yeah. His Good cool. song. But, uh, God, that's right. You're a musical nerd. I'm a nerd for a lot of things, man. I, yeah. I can't help it. Um, no, like I think if Nebraska went into Ohio State and pulled it off, that'd be the greatest thing to be there and witness it live. But at this point, I think we'll be okay. six and one or seven and now heading into that game. When that schedule has, really shapes when, when people ask what you know, you see all these questions online. What's the most important game for the Huskers to win? I always say that game. The Ohio State game. Ohio State. I think yeah. Ohio State would show that we're really that we've arrived. Like you know, the, it'd be you know mm -hmm. not just knocking on the door, or opening the door, it'd be tearing it off its hinges. Yeah. Uh, I think the most important for the success of the season. This is going to be the most boring answer. You did wherever the sixth win comes from, hmm. because like as much as I want to say like. Hey, when you look at the defense and you look at the returning experience on the offensive line, you look at the upgrades at the skill positions on offense, you, this should be an eight to 10 win roster. But really, like, we can't put the cart before the horse. We can't do what we did, like, under Frost, where there was talks of national championships and, you know, or BC, you know, BCS. Wow. That hasn't been around in a hot minute. Um, New Year's six bowl games in years one and two. Like, right now, let's get that sixth win. Like, you know, Greg, incremental improvement has been a tagline of this show. Brother. You know, like, 
Let's get that six win, and then wait, I wait, think wait. Once we get that, I need six to write this down. How many? How many taglines do we have? We have the Yingling tagline. We have the incremental improvement, guys. You know, this is what I do. I'm a note taker. I'm an organizer. So we have a tagline. Incremental improvement. Oh, that's that's been our that's mantra for six is years. It, yeah. Is it? Is it for five heart or is it for the after? It started on five. It started five. It's a five heart. Um, Dave, David brought up another big point. Um, last year was painful chasing the sixth win. That month of November, I think, in addition to Heinrich Harburg getting hurt and we played some, you know, Iowa, that game's always going to be tough with the defense that they field. Wisconsin, until we get the monkey off our back, we're going to be dealing with them, you know, in our heads. Uh, Maryland was a twilight zone game, and Michigan State, we just weren't prepared for some of the looks they threw at us. But we really were gripping. We kind of puckered up there through the month of November, chasing that six wins. So the sooner we can get to six wins this upcoming season, I think the more loose you're going to see this team play. And I think you're going to see them maybe, you know, perhaps be in position to take down the giant on October 26th. I I just need to add one thing. Hmm. Haas. I have never seen Dylan Raiola play anything but loose. Fucking hell. I mean, you throw 34 <laughs> touchdowns and one pick playing Georgia 5A football, you're doing something right. Oh, yeah. Right? And when you're getting compared to – you know, Trevor Lawrence is really the only other reasonable comparison coming out of high school at this point. We saw what he did as a freshman at Clemson. There's reason to be excited. It all comes down to what do we do with the offensive line? How do they, you know, Micah Mazuka? how does he get implemented into the starting lineup? And so if we can build that supporting cast around him, we'll be okay. You know, I would be pleased if his freshman year output is what Adrian Martinez did as a freshman. 26, 2700 yards. Around he's not going to start. He'll start, Greg. He's not going to start. Greg. Where, where is you, it? You want to watch arm punts, you know, all game long? You want to watch a, you know, interception on the at the five-yard line when a receiver's running wide-ass open? Hey, we're not Pete Carroll. We're going to run that ball. No, I'm talking about Michigan State. He right. launches one. <clears throat> Alex Bullock is wide ass open on the five, and he throws it to the middle of the field to a guy who looks like he's playing center field for Michigan State. Fred Sacco says to me, it's Heinrich Harburg's job to lose. That's the spring ball line. That's the early fall camp line. But I, the, I the just haven't of, heard anybody say that. The starter. Except for Fred. Fred, you're you're – in a camp all by yourself. I have not heard anybody say that up until now. <laughs> Minnie, <laughs> I'm not going to read it, but I'll let you answer. Okay. Because Fred asked if it's a serious, ser with a serious question, serious question, Minnie. No, no, you don't have to Do read they, it because of the sensitive nature of it. You can just answer it. It's okay. a sensitive nature, but no, Greg. And no, sorry. I always do that. Fred and, Fred and Greg. <laughs> Button Jeff. It's I'm going to take my glasses off. I'm not going to be able to see okay. anything. We're just going to have, I have Haas, four letters. I have Greg, four letters. I have Fred, four letters. Guys, like mix it up. Okay. Fred, no, I don't have a day job. <laughs> I'm a mom. That drives all the time. I told you. Three schools, all the activities. Yes. Making sure that she knows Dylan Riola's personal schedule. Eh. Eh, eh. I don't also, know his schedule. TSD says, uh, I'm smoking crack if I think he uh, DR is not starting. So uh, buying Yingling isn't the only thing you're doing in the Culver's parking lot. I, I, you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> Uh, uh, Dylan Greg. Uh, Roger says Dylan thank God not four letters so we can keep that one uh, <laughs> I wanted to say exactly. 
Thanks, Fred. Appreciate David that. David brought up it's hard to believe Scott Frost blew off his recruiting apartment apartment appointment with Dylan Thanks Rowland. That's you know what, what I said. That, he, that's what happens when you drink a lot of Cuervo Gold Margaritas. Wouldn't happen Margarita. if you stick to England. Wouldn't happen if you start uh, stuck with England. Or banquet. Um, Aaron Rostovsky says, didn't have many letter shaming everyone on here on my bingo card tonight. I smugly say with my five letters. So... Uh, all right, we got more star questions. We're ninety minutes into this thing. This is okay. this is a show. Let me tell you, getting um, serious. All right, who's our starting running back? Is it going to be Dowdell? Dowdell, yeah, six three two fifteen. Yeah, I mean, yep. cool. I think there'll be a lot of carries still for Emmett Johnson. While we're at it, TSD wants to know uh, how we we kind of address the the running back. What about wide receivers and offensive line? I mean, probably too early to really narrow no. down no. i think i think no. the old line will be pretty much no, 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 no. as it's huh. 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 what have i done what have i done <laughs> you guys so on coronation i actually wrote a preview for the old line okay so i have the whole thing it's coming out hopefully this week maybe next week no, 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 no. I can tell you anything you want to know about the old line. What do you want to know? I can Who's actually our starting tell you. offensive Who's... line? Okay. Teddy Prohaska, Turner Cochran. I know. Corcoran. I can't. I can't. Ben Scott. I'm not going to ask you to repeat the way you said it. Just... PG-13 <laughs> Justin, Justin, Justin Evans Jenkins and Micah Mazuka. That's who I have. I think. Do you disagree, Hoff? Yeah, I think it'll be Teddy going left to right. I think it'll be Teddy Prohaska at left tackle. I think that at left guard, you will probably see Justin Evans Jenkins. So I agree there. Uh, Ben Scott at center, and then Micah Mazuka at guard, and Bryce Benhart at tackle. Oh, did I not? Oh my gosh, you're right. How did I forget Bryce Benhart? I, Bryce Benhart is playing pretty pretty well at the he, end. Of the yeah, year. he had like which 41, is complete... 41, 41 starts, which was tied with uh, Jeremiah Searle, Searles. Yeah. I also think that you could potentially see maybe Henry Latovsky take one of those guard spots, just you know, as a third year in the program, you know, kind of may, maybe make a run at you know him and. Um, Justin Evans Jenkins battling it out for that guard spot because Mazuka, you could just pencil him in as a starter right now. Absolutely. That's what he's here for. Yep. Let's hope. Go ahead and read this one. Maybe it's much more nebulous. Um, I'd like to see it play out, you know, through into the fall. Yeah. Go Greg. ahead, Greg. What were you going to say? Oh, no, I, I want to read this one instead. Uh, living in Omaha, David Matney says, DR needs to spend some of his nil money for security from stalkers. Uh-huh. Yeah. Whatever. I thought it was funny. Dude, um, the guy, you know what? He's 18 years old. Let's get real. Okay. You're right. 18. Just <laughs> only marginally better than 17. Uh, Fred says, "Many uh, a question for you. What does the offensive line give Dylan for breakfast, and when do they kiss his feet?" Good thing he's got all his toes. You know what Dylan has said, quote unquote, <laughs> that he's got to love on the offensive line because those guys do all the work and they get none of the love. That's exactly what he said. Spoken like. Any other quarterback who has half a brain? I mean, they. So I let, no. Let, Twenty years ago, when I was uh, a rookie radio guy in Shadron, Nebraska, and I would go down on the field after a football game, and I would talk to, oftentimes the, the player of the game, you know, which I tried to, you know, what like the quarterback would have been the obvious choice all the time. These were teams that were undefeated or maybe lost one or two regular season games. 
great group of guys. And I would say, you know, uh, what do you think about the game? Quarterbacks, they're always like, got to thank my offensive line without those guys. I mean, yeah. It's it is page one, paragraph one of the quarterback handbook. That's right. <laughs> Don't be a Dan Marino. All right. I love Haas being here. You need to come back. You know, I'll uh, probably be here through spring ball, then take another sabbatical. You know. <laughs> uh, let's see. I, my schedule of being on this podcast is much like a European work schedule. I'll just be, you know, out <laughs> for three months. All right, let's knock out some more of these uh, comments from before. Um, Melissa said at 925, I think Nebraska sports are there for heartaches, which we were talking about men's basketball at the time. So, yeah, I mean, there's not a whole lot of uh, lie, lying in that statement. Pretty accurate. Okay, cool. Moving on. Yeah. Sorry, Melissa. I thought that I thought that would generate some more conversation, but I guess Let's not. Well, okay. No, we all know it's true. You want me to go down the list? Do you want me to tell you the first time? Our hearts have been ripped open. Heart. They've been ripped open and just torn out. And then just try to be placed back and then sewn back up. And it's just it's scarred over tissue. It's not going to heal very easily. That's what it is. We appreciate your dedication, David Matney. <laughs> he says it's a lot of work being a dedicated member of the Chatterverse, and he would know <laughs> because he is the official realtor of the Five Heart Podcast. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, um, and he he has more. Uh, this is a quick and fun one. Uh, he says, "Has anyone ever seen the video when someone played the tunnel walk as Mickey Joseph was released from prison?" Had to admit it was funny. I have not seen that video. I kind of want to find it now. Um, <laughs> A little, little Alan Parsons project uh, on the big day of, of being released. Um, all right. Tiger Shark Diver says, we have to beat USC this year from, from my childhood memory of getting our asses embarrassed while at the game. Mm, 07. Ooh. 06 and 07, if I remember correctly. It was the, the back-to-back years. Um, by the way, it was the 06 game I watched in a bar in Shadron with Josh uh, and a couple of, of – you know, would be become my friends, but that's as unfortunate of an outcome as that game was. I think that's when I started to understand what it meant to be a Nebraska fan, and, and that's that was the start for me. So I can't say I, I joined in the glory years, I joined in 06. So 02 for me, I went to my first game in 02, and I remember the 90s, but uh, wasn't paying attention to football at that time. So Went to my so first, first time Nebraska and... football broke my heart was against Texas in 2002, and Jamal Lord threw that pick to Nathan Vasher. Frank should have just played for the field goal. Went to my first game in 2012, and it was at the Rose Bowl against UCLA. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that game. Ooh, that game. That's a good one. That should have been a win. Um, I got belligerently drunk after that game. I believe every bit of that. I did not because I was being a, a nice guest uh, to a friend. I love part. this question. Okay, TSD. guys. Tiger Go, I'll, let you, I'll let you read it. Diver. <laughs> he asked, will Scott ever step foot in Nebraska again? I'll tell you who won't step foot, in, at least complete foot in Nebraska again. That's Deion Sanders. <laughs> Sorry. Were you, you were waiting. You thought of that? No, that that honest to God just came to me. Um, I think, yeah, because uh, look, it he only in, stands four toes down on business. In in worst case scenario, and I I don't mean this in any uh, like wishful thinking or anything like that, but in the very worst case scenario, uh, Scott would come back for his parents' funeral. His dad has already passed away. Okay, I think I'm Scott sorry. would come back for. Ah, never mind. I'm not gonna say it. Really, Greg? I, I, I think he'll come back eventually. In 2020. I, I think he yeah. would come back for a new Top Golf opening up in Lincoln. <laughs> golden Tee. When, like when's golden. the Golden Tee National Championship? Is it going to be in Omaha this year? Yeah. Um, Fred says that Haas, the Ball State game in 07, was when he turned heel on Nebraska. 
you know what? There's that game in everyone's life as a sports fan where they become pessimistic. For me, 2019 Colorado out in Boulder. So something just died inside of me that day. You're welcome, Fred. Fred says I went total NWO on that one. <laughs> I appreciate that. That was good. Uh, David says, Hoss, we all know what you're thinking. <laughs> you, do. Um, you do, David. You do. It, Melissa says he'd come back and win free. Melissa. That's great. Uh <laughs> Damn, uh, Tiger Shark Diver, your your GD brother was in school at CU there. Damn, man. <laughs> Beautiful campus, but damn. Guys, I hate to tell you, but my other half, he got D2? his master's. Yes, he got his master's from Colorado. It's a good school. Uh, I mean... Beautiful campus. He actually said before we went to the game, I don't know, should I wear black and gold or should I wear red and I'm like I'm looking at him like are you freaking? I will kill you <laughs> that might be the first time we've heard many swear on the show the Colorado <laughs> fans that I ran into that like remembered the rivalry whether they were you know born in you know the 50s 60s 70s 80s 90s around for when we were in the same conference and we're rivals they were all in all not too bad at that game it was the college student c you know cu fans who there were trust funders trustafarians from southern california and arizona and um vermont you know that sucked but i'll never forget this very um th this guy looked like he was straight out of the sopranos turns to my buddy and he's wearing my buddy's wearing a shirt that says ralphie has no balls and he looks at him and he's like, oh, no, my friend. And he has this really thick Italian oh. accent. And he's like, Ralphie has these big, round balls. And my <laughs> buddy just looks at him and goes, Ralphie's a, Ralphie's a female, dude. And he's just like, <laughs> how do you know? And he's like, how do you not know? And it turned into those two literally just having like a, I know you are, but what am I? Kind of um, <laughs> argument as Eric Chenier's defense is just getting shredded on the field. I know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> shout out to Moonbot Seven who uh, jumped in here, got here late, but that's all right. Said so my brother's a CU uh, biochem grad and always wears Husk Red and currently living in Lincoln. So, hey, uh, brother's it's doing not the Lord's all, work. You can you go to school somewhere good. It's not all Colorado fans. I mean, I met some nice fans. I met some horrible. I mean, bottom of the barrel fans. You know who I, who I was with? I was with um, Connor Hayden from Corn Craze. And we were leaving one bar after, after the loss. And we walk out and this girl, this student, is wearing this low cut top. And literally, yes, everything is hanging out. And Connor's like, oh my gosh, that is so disgusting. And I'm like, Seriously, dude, I could care less right now. We just lost. Like, what do you, of course, keep looking. I'm not, I'm just like crying. It was, this is, this is the scenario that we dealt, we, we were dealt. It's all right, Minnie. This is a safe place. <laughs> your, your scenario after game sounds better than mine. I ate at a Wendy's in Broomfield and me and the three people I was with all just looked depressed sitting there. Saddest sight you'll ever see. Minnie, are you cheating on coordination? That's what <laughs> no. Uh, no. Con no. Connor's just Connor's a friend. That's all. Aaron says, I live in Colorado and I can attest that the ratio of decent CU fans to bad fans is the same as the odds of Minnie ever catching DR. <laughs> yeah, I was at Dead and Company at Folsom Field back on July 2nd. And uh yeah, I was wearing a Nebraska hat, of course, and I ran into so many different fans. The Michigan fans were all right uh, that I ran into when I was buying beer. The Alabama fan that I ran into just wanted to talk about the Tide. You know, um, the K-State fan was tide. like, hey, you guys should join the Big 12 again. I was like, yeah, fuck that, pal. You know, <laughs> and the, the Colorado fans, though, you know, they just 
you know, they still act like it's 1990 and, you know, they still, they like, do. They still act what? like we painted a bed sheet to say Sal is dead. Go big red over an IED. That's it. That's a, it's an urban legend. Dion fed, fed them all this garbage that we are just like, he made it so personal. That's what he does. That's why He's I'm going to really... love when we put up half a hundred on him. Hell yeah. Me too. Are you going to the game? I'm going to try to. I'm going for sure. Yeah. I, I mean, like, I'm also going, well, the other road game I'm going to is Iowa City in Iowa this year. So two road games. Greg's like, why not Illinois last year? Um, <laughs> but I, I, recall, uh, I recall I extended the invitation. The Col Colorado tickets will probably be expensive, but, uh, you know, just have to wait it out. Aaron says that you were shaming us for liking Star Wars and you went to a Dead & Company show. <laughs> I, mean, I, I even have a tattoo on the back of my arm. I can't, yeah, there you, you kind of see it. Of the bolt. All right. yep. You know where the gym is. I'll find it myself. Never mind. All right. Uh, we got I have a Nebraska tattoo right there. That's fair. I don't have one of those. Wait, what? Yeah. You have a Nebraska tattoo? Stay in Nebraska oh. under my left arm. Look at that. I'm obsessed with Nebraska tattoos. Just get one. <laughs> that, yeah. I, you know, I've been thinking about it. All right. We have more starred uh, comments that we need to get through. Uh, this is a great one from Tiger Shark Diver. I had to highlight it. It's completely irreverent, but that's what makes it really stand out and so beautiful. Tiger Shark Diver says, Lincoln Riley cook steaks well done. Crime uh, against humanity. Should never be done. Shame on him. Um, we're gonna, we might have to save that comment for another time. But, um, <laughs> says, I've got one tattoo on my bum, <laughs> don't obsess <laughs> over it. <laughs> um, all right. Aaron Rostovsky, our coronation baseball beat writer, says shameless plug for the 17 and 5 baseball team, which should be ranked, but they're not because that's how it goes. I don't think, you know, despite the fact that Nebraska was knocking off top ranked Purdue and, and top team in the conference, Wisconsin, Nebraska men's basketball is never ranked in the top 25, and that was uh, criminal as well. Um, Highlander Gunn says, What does everyone think about the NFL's new hip drop tackle or, or ban or whatever they call it? Um, it I know that. Well. Uh, Will um, Compton had some very strong opinions about it. Um, I, I, they're going to be throwing a penalty on almost every play, I feel. Uh, yeah. Yep. It's going to be it's going to be like that year that they allowed pass interference to be reviewable. Uh, let's see. Fred Sacco says, Mini, what Nebraska tattoo will you get and wear? He wants to venture a guess. Okay. If I were to get a tattoo, I know exactly what it would be. I'm not. I'm not. But before but, you before you say what it would be, can I can I tell you what I think it would be? Okay. Right here. DR15. Uh-uh. Mm -hmm. Sure. No, no. Okay. So if I were to get a tattoo. For Nebraska, it would say there's no place like Nebraska, <laughs> not on my forehead. <laughs> but did you know that Thomas Fedoni likes to practice giving tattoos to other people? I I'd let I'd let him give me a tattoo. So when if a, I were to get staffing? if I were to get one. When a staff infection breaks out on the team, no, 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 ew, ew, no, maybe a fake tattoo. How about that? That's probably safer. <laughs> Aaron Rostovsky says super chats will now go towards a Husker tattoo for many. Uh, no, they'll they'll always go to charity, uh, especially when we do our special uh super chats for uh Team Jack Foundation. So Hoss, did you know that over the course of just a couple months, we raised over $400 for Team Jack Foundation? I saw something about that at one point. I was like, huh, they're doing a lot more stuff with the podcast than I ever did. Well, I just show up and talk, you know. That's all I do. Minnie has the notes, and I sometimes look at them. 
Uh, <laughs> I, I want to come back on when John's on so I can yell at John some more. That'd be great. Uh, Look at John's mm-hmm. phone. Uh, we were talking about worst places to go. Uh, Tiger Shark Diver says the worst place he's been to is East St. Louis, uh, which, by the way, is like, for me, nine miles that way. Is that uh, where the Culver's Park is? <laughs> nine Just miles? Yeah, I, I live very close to East St. Louis. Um, Belleville? Belleville, thank you. Uh, yeah. No, the, the Culver's was up in Collinsville, thank you. Uh, nope. Not uh, getting over <laughs> the Portillo's in Bloomington normal? I'm not driving five and a half hours. Uh, to Bloomington. I'm sorry. How is that five hours from you? All right, I, uh, it's at least four. I don't. I don't think you realize how close to St. Louis I am. Uh, you know, I'll have to go look at a map again. Please yeah. do. It's it's been a minute since you've looked at a map. Um, I drive through St. East St. Louis all the time. My wife refuses. Like when we try to go to the zoo or something, I'm like, we can save three minutes by driving to through East St. Louis. She's like, no, we'll we'll go around. Um, this is a true story. The, uh, Kurt Russell classic escape from New York. Parts of that movie were filmed in East St. Louis, which if you're keeping track, this is true. Wait, what's, what is it again? Streets of New York? No escape from New York. Oh, uh, we'll leave this character's name of snake Plisson, Pilsen, something like that. Um, but only mid eighties East St. Louis could look like, um, uh, this you know, post dystopian New York, dystopian New York City. So that's a true story. Parts of that movie were filmed in East. My grandparents were from East St. Louis. My mom was from East St. Louis before uh, it became before the, the neighborhood the, went up. The high school that my uncles attended is now a prison. Just want you all to realize that it was once a Catholic wow. high school. Now it's a prison. Well, so. Architects have always designed high schools that look a lot like prisons. They do. I, I don't go. I don't go to East St. Louis to get black ball yingling or anything else. So. <laughs> Smoke crack in the Culver's parking lot. I'm telling you, it was Collinsville. Greg, Greg's a lot tougher than he lets on, guys. He probably has stories. Uh, yeah, part of the Catholic mafia. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> is that, we, is we, that- we, you know, we uh, usually on Fridays we do a little adoration, then we bust some skulls. You know, it's a, but tomorrow Make adoration is closed because it's Good Friday. You got a busy day Friday. tomorrow. <sighs> yeah, we've on. been on for almost two hours. Damn. This is what we do now. I'm so sorry. I didn't prepare you for this at all. <laughs> no, um, all right, we we have honestly we actually so- finished about thirty minutes ago. This is just the after part. <laughs> Midwest goodbye. That's right. Um, <laughs> TSD wants to know who are the nicest fans we've met. Us. Yeah. Like if you've been to a real good clear, it's not like, Colorado because we there are like tons ourselves. Of well, I think you have to go to another fan base. <laughs> no, I don't. Honestly, this is okay. A distinction needs to be made here. Iowa fans in Omaha are the devil them in, incarnate. Hey, Iowa fans oh. in Iowa City are actually not that bad. Like when I was in Iowa City in 22, I was at a restaurant before the game, and you know I was walking to get a beer, and somebody was like, "Hey, who do you get? Who are you guys gonna hire?" You know, just had a conversation about you know. I think I was like, "Oh, you know, it's probably Matt Rule or Luke Fickle, one of the two. And then you know, talked about the game a little bit. You know, and that was that. After the game, no problems. It's the Iowa fans in Omaha that I absolutely despise. I wish I would have known that. You guys were talking about the first game you ever went to. First game I ever went to, I stayed in Omaha the first night and went to the the main street down there. What is it called? Old the market. market street? The yes. Market area. And I was so excited. I, I was telling her. This is my first house. Like, I'm expecting everyone in Nebraska to be a fan. Why wouldn't you be? And there's like 20 something plus year olds, you know, waiting at the bars, and not one of them were fans. Not one. In fact, they're like, ah, oh, that's what our parents did. No, we don't like Nebraska. They ruined it for me. My first night, I was so excited. Horrible people. And they lived across the river. They're Iowans, yeah. I, mm-hmm. 
They're, they're in so, Iowa fans in Omaha are absolutely insufferable. Tiger Shark Diver says LSU fans are cool. Uh, to which uh, Moonbot agrees. David Matney, the official realtor of the Five Hard Podcast, says Oklahoma fans mutual respect. The worst <laughs> fans that I've come across. Um, Michigan State fans were just fucking weird. Yeah. Like that entire town, East Lansing, Michigan, was like being in a Stephen King novel. The people, like, I don't know if there's too much lead or too much pollutants in the water up there. I mean, you're not far from Flint, Michigan, but it was the strangest group of people that I've ever encountered in my life. Hmm. All right, let's move on to the next uh, question here, or next comment, I should say. Fred Sacco says, I'm free Monday and Thursday nights holding a broadcasting degree and no Dylan uh, hang up. I'm here if you need me. Oh, is I, that I, is that comment aimed at me, Fred? I'm going <laughs> to let y'all hash that one out. Um, let's see. All right. But we were talking about you said I, was, I look forward to Fred. This comment has to be addressed. Husker Bob says, we went to a bar in East St. Louis when in college, and the female bartender showed us her abdominal stab wound from her, her previous shift. <laughs> Not surprised. It's Did St. you Louis. get her number, Bob? <laughs> you, she go home with you? Um, all right. Mr. Uh, I'm sorry. The ofi- David Matney, the official realtor of the Five Hard Podcast, says, which team is best, the Turner Gill 83 team or the 95 Tommy Frazier team? Before I was born for one of them. The other one, I was five. But adjusting for changes made to the game, I'm going to go 95, more modern era. I almost think you have to go 95. I mean, Uh, I think everybody. I think T.O.'s offense was better designed in 83 than it was in the 90s. I mean, he was running RPOs from under center all the way back then. It was pretty reminiscent of, like, the Niners offense under Kyle Shanahan. So Whoa. I, think, I think the eighties offense is TO's eighties offense is the best offense ever in college football. Look at, like, look well at what Aaron Rostovsky's comic is right before eleven. Yeah. You gotta read he that, Minnie. I can't. I can't do even it. utter those words. The Minnie, Minnie read it. Hey, Sacrilegious. You, you, you don't even believe in that number fifteen player, okay? So you have to read it. Okay. Tell me, I, but I no, no, let me no, just no, say no, no I don't agree. No disclaimers. Just read it. Tommy Frazier is the most say it. overrated player in Husker history. He's saying that to poke the bear. Does he really believe that? You know who I think is the most overrated player in Husker history? Who? Tommy Armstrong. Hmm. All those stats. Don't empty, you say that about Tommy empty, Armstrong. Empty calories. Maybe. Maybe. Those stats are like empty calories from junk food. He came Perhaps. back from the hospital in Columbus, Ohio, sir. How dare you? Where are he the scrubs? He, he, I mean, he, he had five hearts. That's what we're all about here, Haas. O- overrated. Five heart, Haas. Don't forget. Along with Kenny <laughs> Bell. Oh. I'll tell you what. My statistics may not agree with me, but my... The, my number one Husker wide receiver of all times, always going to be Nate Swift. Hell yes. Real gritty lunch pail guy, coach on the field, kind of guy you'd like to date your daughter. All right, we got to, we got to move Do on. I know, do I, from what year is Nate, Nate Swift? Oh, five to oh eight. Yeah. Oh. Uh, all right. Look, look him up. He, he, He's oh, good. Wow, yeah. I will. You know, I um, will. Let's see. Fred wants to know who's uh, who here's going to the spring game. I'm not. Uh, but I think we're planning a tailgate or some other type of activity that weekend between spring ball and baseball. Are you coming uh, to Nebraska, Greg? Hmm? Are you coming to Nebraska for that? No, I said I'm not going to be there for that. No, for the tailgate. No. Oh, sorry. Phonetic. <laughs> sorry. Sorry, maybe I didn't was not clear. I will not be there in the spring. Will not. I am hoping to be there, and we're still working on this. You and me, Hoss and and Josh, we're still working on the Colorado tickets. Um, Sweet. So that's 
that's where I'm at for that. Um, so I don't know. We'll have more details on the tailgate, etc. Be Make sure you check coronation.com. Uh, I'm going to start ripping. I really got to take a leak. So, yes, yeah, same. Uh, <laughs> My back teeth are floating. Uh, <laughs> Um, what's going to be the surprise win? And the person who wants to know that is David Matney, the official realtor of the Five Heart Podcast. USC surprise win in right. LA. I hope you're right. I'm going to say Wisconsin at home. <gasps> I hope you're right too. Because I'm I can't wait to hear Greg's predictions a week before the season kicks off. 17 and 0. 16 and 0. <laughs> It'll just never. It'll absolute Kool Aid. So sweet that it, your teeth are rotting out just listening to Greg talk about it, and you love it. Um, mm-hmm. Melissa says she thinks the surprise one's going to be Colorado. I don't think so. I think that's going to be a pretty well uh, foregone conclusion. Uh, Roger says UCLA. Um, Fred wants to know when is the tailgate? Might be there if Lucky maybe audition for new co-hosts <laughs> that day. <laughs> uh, again, check coordination.com. No. Red? How do you look in red? That is the question. It's Does all it about look the lighting. like salmon? Does Stop it look it. like salmon on Stop you? Uh, TSD says, I just hope we have no spring injuries. Yeah. Agreed. And James Portman says the UTEP game with Heinrich Harper starting. <laughs> I'm not going to read that next comment, yeah. Mr. Matney. Uh, <laughs> we're not going to do that. We're just going to move on. Um but David Matney, the official realtor of the Five Heart Podcast, wants to know how much rope does Matt Rule get this year? What do we expect in terms of wins? Six plus. Six plus. And even eight if plus. he doesn't get six plus, his job is eight plus. Safe. Yeah. Not saying that people are going to be happy with him, but his job will still be safe. Yeah. I mean, because still. I know we're in a what what have you done for me lately type of mentality because that's the mentality we've been in for the last okay. 20 years. Yes. What have you done for me lately? Just gotten the number one recruit in the country. Oh, yeah. The number one recruit in Nebraska. Really? You what? I really got to be. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> let's, let's go. Okay, thanks. <laughs> uh, Fred says, week before the season, Greg says 20, you know, and he's on crack. I am on crack right now because I'm sitting on my butt. See what I did there? I made a joke. Uh, David Matney says Cracking six plus. Parking lot. <laughs> Different kind of crack. Um, what's the abridged version, Minnie, of, of how do you became a Husker fan? No, like, you okay. seriously don't have the time. <laughs> okay, moving on. Remember that. Write that down. Put that in your notes for next week so we can it. address that next week. And MK wants to know, by the way, great question, 9.23 p.m. Do we put too much pressure on our teams? Not any more than any other school. No. No. I think that if the players are worried about fan expectations, then perhaps their focus isn't aligned properly. Does that make sense? Like, mm-hmm. I, there's one thing for, for you know, um, uh, what was it, the, the bulletin board material type of thing? But at the end of the day, like they should be wanting to win for themselves, their teammates, the program, the university, their future professional prospects. As much as I hate to say it, like we want them, we want to think they're winning for Nebraska and, and or for the fans. And maybe, you know, I, I got that feeling from like the Kese Tominagas and, and whatnot, you know, the, the Josiah Alex, you know, for when we're talking about, um, when we're talking about uh, uh, Nebraska basketball, um, I do feel like they wanted to be that the team, the program that finally got that elusive first tournament win. But at the end of the day, um, I, I, I they shouldn't be feeling any pressure from the fans because if they don't like it here, history shows that they can go somewhere else and they might get more nil money to do it type of thing. So, On that note, did you Greg kiss yourself at some Hawk. point during that? Because that was really <laughs> long-winded for a guy that has to do that. Guys, we're this done. Great Good night. <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks, David. Matney, the official realtor of the Five Heart Podcast. We appreciate all of you, but our time has uh, come and gone. 
uh, and Inspired. soon I will as well. So it's after 11 o'clock here in the central time zone. Uh, that is it for this episode. Uh, for all of you, we will be back next week. Uh, hopefully John will be here. Uh, I don't know if he is great. If not, it is what it is. Uh, we'll see about Haas's availability. Minnie's going to be here. I'll be here uh, because y'all are family to us and we appreciate all of you. We know you have a lot of entertainment options for a Thursday evening. We truly appreciate the fact that you spend every week with us here at the five hour podcast. So if you're watching on YouTube on corn or on uh, X or on Facebook, thank you so much. Make sure you hit the like, hit the share, hit the subscribe, hit the notifications, do all the things you have to do to make sure that everybody knows about the five hour podcast and everything here at corn nation. So for me, see if I point to the right people for mini hunt for Hoss Reuter, Greg Mahachko here. This is the Five Heart Podcast. We remind you each week. Let me try that again. We remind you each and every week that Five Heart is all the heart you need. Hoss? No. She doesn't do the Go Big Red? I'm 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 throwing back to uh, the the olden days. Win the damn game. Minnie? Party on. Go Big Red. There we go. Like, I don't know that party on shit. We're not Wayne's World.